The evening of July 17, 2007 was closing in. TAM Airlines Flight 3054 began its descent. It was an Airbus A320, a workhorse of the skies. The aircraft carried 181 passengers and six crew members. They were flying from Porto Alegre in southern Brazil. Their destination was Sao Paulo's Congonhas Airport. Little did they know this approach would be anything but ordinary. But tonight, conditions were different. Tonight, danger lurked unseen. Congonhas Airport is not like other airports, it sits right in the heart of Sao Paulo. Buildings and busy streets surround it. This urban embrace leaves little room for error. It was opened in the 1930s. Back then, it was on the city's outskirts. But Sao Paulo grew, swallowing the airport. Now it is a bustling hub, constrained by its environment. Pilots landing here face unique challenges. The runways are shorter than at many international airports. There are no long overruns to catch a plane that goes too far. Runway 35. L17R is the main runway at Congonhas. It is notoriously tricky. Its length is just over 1,900 meters, or about 6,300 feet. For an Airbus A320, this is adequate in good conditions. But when rain falls, the runway changes. It becomes slick, reducing braking effectiveness. For years, pilots had voiced concerns about its surface. It lacked proper grooving to drain water away. This made it prone to forming a layer of water. This layer could cause aircraft to hydroplane to skim across the surface like a water ski. The airport's location also means strict noise abatement procedures. These procedures can sometimes complicate approaches. Pilots must be precise. The weather over Sao Paulo on July 17, 2007 was grim. Heavy rain had been falling for hours. It was a persistent, drenching downpour. This kind of weather is common in Sao Paulo during winter. But on this particular day, it was relentless. The rain turned roads into rivers, it reduced visibility, and crucially it soaked Congonas Airport's runways. The air traffic controllers were busy, they were managing numerous flights in these difficult conditions. Pilots were reporting poor braking action on landing, water on a runway is an insidious enemy for an aircraft, it reduces the friction between the tires and the pavement. This makes it harder for the plane to slow down, if the water is deep enough, hydroplaning can occur. The tires lose contact with the runway surface entirely, they ride on a thin film of water. When this happens, braking and steering become almost impossible. The aircraft essentially becomes a sled. Runway 35L at Congonas without its grooves was especially vulnerable to this phenomenon. The recent resurfacing had made it smooth, but also less porous. Pilots landing before Flight 3054 had reported the runway as wet and slippery, The Airbus A320 is a modern, sophisticated aircraft. It is equipped with multiple systems to ensure safety. One of these systems is the thrust reversers. These are devices on the engines. When activated after landing, they redirect the engine's thrust forward. This helps to slow the aircraft down. They are particularly useful on short or wet runways. They supplement the wheel brakes and spoilers. For Flight 3054, this system was not fully operational. This added another layer of complexity to an already dangerous situation. The thrust reverser on the A320's right engine, the number 2 engine, was deactivated. This was due to a maintenance issue. It was permissible to fly the aircraft with one thrust reverser inoperative. There are procedures for this. Pilots are trained to handle such situations. However, it meant that the aircraft would have reduced braking capability from its engines. The left engine's reverser would work. Section 5. Cockpit Decisions, A Fatal Misjudgment Under Pressure As Flight 3054 made its final approach, the pilots were focused. Captain DeSacco was the pilot flying, First Officer Lima was monitoring, the rain was still falling, the runway was slick, they knew about the deactivated thrust reverser on the right engine. They had discussed the landing, the aircraft touched down on runway 35L, it was a bit faster than usual, and perhaps a bit further down the runway, but it was within acceptable limits. The critical moments came just after the wheels met the pavement. Immediately after touchdown the spoilers on the wings should have deployed. These large panels disrupt airflow and increase drag. They also help press the aircraft onto the runway, improving tire grip. On Flight 3054, the spoilers did not deploy automatically. This was the first clear sign something was wrong. The reason they didn't deploy was linked to the position of the thrust levers. 
For the spoilers to deploy automatically on the A320, both thrust levers must be at or near the idle position. This was not the case. The flight data recorder later revealed the crucial error. Section 6. Beyond the threshold, the unstoppable skid. With one engine fighting the other, Flight 3054 was out of control. The Airbus A320 hurtled down the wet runway. It was not decelerating. In fact, due to the forward thrust from the right engine, it may have even been slightly accelerating. The pilots battled to regain control, but on the slick surface, with compromised braking, their efforts were futile. The end of runway 35L was approaching fast. Beyond it lay a busy avenue, Avenida Washington Luis. And beyond that, buildings. There was no room for error, and error had occurred. The aircraft, unable to stop, careened off the end of the runway. It was still traveling at high speed, estimated at over 90 knots, or 100 miles per hour, or 170 kilometers per hour. It left the paved surface, crossed a grassy area, and then became airborne for a short period. It cleared the airport perimeter fence. It flew over the bustling Avenida Washington Luis. Miraculously, it missed the heavy traffic below during this brief flight. But its deadly trajectory continued. Directly in its path was a four-story building. It was a TAM Express cargo facility and offices. The impact was catastrophic. Section 7. Picking up the pieces. The investigation begins. In the immediate aftermath of the crash, chaos reigned. Flames lit up the night sky. Sirens wailed as emergency crews converged on the scene. Firefighters battled the intense blaze. Police cordoned off the area. The scale of the tragedy was horrifying. The TAM Express building was a raging inferno. The wreckage of Flight 3054 was embedded within it. The priority was to extinguish the fire and search for any possible survivors. Sadly, it soon became apparent there were no survivors from the aircraft. The focus shifted to recovery. Brazil's Aeronautical Accidents Investigation and Prevention Center, Senapa, took charge. Their investigators faced a daunting task. The crash site was complex, a building intertwined with aircraft wreckage. The fire had been incredibly intense, consuming much of the evidence. But two crucial pieces of equipment were vital, the cockpit voice recorder or CVR and the flight data recorder or FDR. These black boxes held the key to understanding what happened in the final moments of Flight 3054. They were located amidst the debris, thankfully intact despite the inferno. Section 8. Unraveling the Truth. Key Findings and Culpability. The analysis of the flight data recorder and cockpit voice recorder was pivotal. The FDR provided a clear picture of the aircraft's parameters. It showed the speed, altitude, engine settings and control inputs. The CVR captured the sounds and conversations in the cockpit. Together, they painted a chilling sequence of events. Investigators learned that the spoilers did not deploy upon landing. This was because the right engine's thrust lever was not at idle, instead it was in the climb power position. The left engine's thrust lever was in reverse. This configuration was the critical factor. The Airbus A320's logic prevents spoiler deployment if any engine is above idle thrust. It also explained why the plane failed to slow down. The forward thrust from the right engine effectively cancelled out the reverse thrust from the left and the braking action of the wheels. The CVR revealed confusion in the cockpit. Sounds indicated the pilots were struggling. One pilot could be heard saying, slow down, slow down. Section 9, Echoes of Tragedy, Forging a Safer Future in Aviation The crash of TAM Airlines Flight 3054 was a terrible wake-up call. It sent shockwaves through Brazil and the global aviation community. The loss of 199 lives demanded action. In the aftermath, significant changes were implemented. These changes aimed to prevent such a disaster from recurring. Kanganha's airport itself underwent major safety upgrades. The main runway, 35L, was finally grooved. This significantly improved water drainage and braking action in wet conditions. New, larger runoff areas were also planned where possible. Airlines and regulatory bodies re-examined procedures. Training for pilots regarding landings on contaminated runways and with system malfunctions like a deactivated thrust reverser was enhanced. Airbus reviewed its flight crew operating manuals. They clarified the procedures and warnings associated with thrust lever management in such situations. The emphasis was on ensuring pilots fully understood the aircraft's logic. 
The accident highlighted how a sequence of small issues and a single misjudgment could cascade into a catastrophe, especially in a high-pressure environment. The legacy of Flight 3054 is one of sorrow but also of learning. Aviation safety is built upon the lessons learned from accidents. Each investigation, each report contributes to a safer sky.